if you have been a believer in God for some time and you realize there's something that just seems to be not right, there's something wrong and you just can't explain it, maybe every so often you catch a glimpse of it or remember when things seem to be more right, but now it's always mixed with a with a teaspoon of confusion or something that just doesn't add up. I might be able to help you today if you would listen to this. You're a believer, right? So you believe you're a created being. We know this because we have creative tendencies. We were made by a perfect creator. So we have these creative tendencies that tends to reflect the creator. We don't create perfectly. We need the stuff that, that he made to use so that we can create both the material things and, and our creativity itself, which is not a physical thing. That is something that he gave to us. The creator gave us this creativity. And again, we do it in, in a similar fashion. It says we are made in his image and his likeness. We are like him in that way, but not perfect like him. So then, take good. He is perfectly good. Perfectly good creator. We also are able and capable of doing some good things. But again, not perfectly like him. So you see, there's a, there's a pattern here that shows that we are like him. We are like this creator. And when it comes to our person, the individuality of our person, again, this is very similar, but we can act like different people. Not that we are schizophrenic, although I know such people exist, but most of us who are relatively well adjusted, we can still act in ways that don't seem to make sense with what we did yesterday. We can act out of tune with that, but that just accentuates the reality of this one who is as far from schizophrenia as he could be. In other words, he epitomizes individuality, just like he is the epitome of creativity. He is the epitome of goodness, and he is the epitome of individuality. And it does kind of make sense that if someone wanted to undermine that, they would undermine all of those notions by saying or suggesting that others could be like this creative, good one. And we see that blatantly in the Old Testament where there's all these other gods. And now, it's not the same way, at least not in our culture, in Western culture. It's, there's other cultures that have all kinds of different gods, varied and diverse gods. But here, for the most part, for some time, it's been pretty much agreed that there is one God. But we have these other things that come in that suggest that you can be like this God. And what my wife and I believe here is that that concept has been allowed to come in, has, has been made to come in, because... Our God is not the epitome of an individual. Our God is actually someone who is not someone, who is different people so that you can have different levels of creativity, different levels of goodness, different levels of forgiveness. And you can think of your own attitude towards these people if you think that God is more than one person. I've seen it myself when talking to people, and they think that one actually forgives and the other doesn't. Or one is petitioned to forgive by one of them or by you. There's all different kinds of setups, but what it does is it, it destroys that, that virtue, that value of the reality of that one good creative one because just as much as it is important to understand that there is one who created there is one who is good there is one 
from whom you were created with the notion of you being one. Because you being a, an individual is, is so supremely important that I, I can't emphasize it or overemphasize it. Because if there was a notion that you are not an individual, that you depend on another person to be you, in other words, you could not be you unless there was someone else who was there with you to make you all of you. That's something I think, I hope we could all agree would be profoundly evil. I think it's profoundly evil to suggest such a thing. And we've done this to God by saying that God is not enough. Again, these are, these are subconscious messages. These are messages that are sent to the subconscious, I should say, that implies this. It doesn't say it blatantly, but if Jesus is God and he needs no other, there is no other beside him, then, then he's God. But if he needs someone else beside him, then he's not really God. And the same thing with the Father and the same thing with the Holy Spirit. If these are individual persons who are not whole, without the other, then that shatters individuality for everyone, for all of us. Because if you don't have an individual creator, then you're susceptible to all this groupthink and all these other ways of living that suggest that your individuality is not something to be respected. It's not that we worship the individual person, it's that we honor the individual person. The individual person is unique and special because of the fact that they were made by that one in the likeness of that one. That's what's significant about it. So we diminish ourselves by diminishing him, by adding to the number of who he is. Jesus is not enough. You need something more. The Father is not enough. You need something more. We take our own our own tendencies and a, apply it to him. Our moodiness, our schizophrenic tendencies have to be explained. And the Trinity is the most common way that's explained. We just make him into three different people. And you can see it, I think, the biggest way in forgiveness. Because instead of just believing the truth, that God himself came here, gave himself for you, took away all your sins, he remembers them no more, there is now this group of people that ministers to your forgiveness. And when you really look at it, and I'd say look at it honestly and think about it, it doesn't do anything to honor him or glorify him. What it does is it sustains and maintains their system, the system of religion that says you need to get this thing that you don't have. Because if you're getting your forgiveness, that means you don't have forgiveness. So if you don't have forgiveness, that means it was never given at the cross. There was no forgiveness at the cross. It's, it's not done, it's not finished. It never happened because you're getting it now through the son petitioning for you or whatever system they set up that these different people are doing on your behalf, combined with your efforts, that is, that is the only way to see it. If you are honest, you have to be honest about it, though. Because if you say you got forgiveness at the cross, and now you get forgiveness every time you do whatever sacraments your denomination tells you to do, you're just living in double-mindedness. And that goes back to what I started from, is you feel like there's something wrong. If you're honest, you know there's something wrong. If you're, you're in one of those systems, you know there's something wrong. And you're always chasing after it, trying to get it to feel right. And it only feels right for a minute, and then it's instantly gone. Because it can't maintain. You can't have that abundant life. You can't have that, that rest that he promised. That yoke that is easy. That burden that is light. You can't have that unless you believe him. And if you believe you can be like him, he is not even an individual, that there's several of them, then that's all confusion. And you're always going to be standing on that quicksand that he spoke of. There's only one rock. 
he's mentioned in the Old Testament and that Jesus, he's the only rock that ever was and will ever be. And that's where you have your stability. That's where you have your peace. That's where you have your life free from confusion. So then if you have any confusion, you can see where it comes from. So you can address it directly instead of being stuck in this murkiness of doing what you quote unquote should be doing and having that create that confusion, create that instability, create that something's wrong, but I just don't know what. And I keep on doing the same thing and it never goes away. That's the only way you're going to get the stability. You have to you have to embrace the fact that your God is an individual. You know you're an individual. You are not another person. As imperfect as you are. So his individuality is absolute perfection. And that's where your rest is. That's where your stability is. That's where freedom from confusion and all this disarray and murkiness and just feeling like something is wrong and I can't do anything about it. That's where it's at, is in getting in touch with the reality of the person of your one good creator, Jesus Christ, in Jesus' name. Amen.